to me, Jameson Tyone is more significant in terms of what the Cubs want to do long term in in this window as it kind of reopens in the eyes of Jed Hoyer and Carter Hawkins. Jameson Tyone is coming from a winning situation with the Yankees. He's not to overstate his significance, but he's probably a top end of the rotation, not an ace, but he's probably a two or a three on a very good pitching staff. And to me, that says it's a professional approach to try to get back in contention, and it's a, it's a big move in the right direction. They're not just relying on the young pitchers that they relied on a year ago, and they're not just saying, well, everyone's going to take a step forward, of course. They'll always get better. You never see guys regress. They're saying, okay, we've got to have a professional pitching staff. We've got to go into this thing believing that we've got this lined up so that if we do get any kind of consistent contribution from these younger guys stepping forward, then we've got all sorts of good things happening. I think you're right. We talk all the time with the teams that we've, we we discuss and scrutinize. There's sometimes, whether it's the Bears occasionally or the White Sox or the Hawks, whatever, organizational arrogance. There's a belief that kind of creeps in that our way is the best way and you become sort of insular, if you will. The Cubs doing this kind of speaks to what you're talking about. They're not falling in love with their own pitching lab. They're not falling in love with their own ideas. Oh, we have the all the answers and we don't need outside help. They developed some really promising pitchers last year and saw Justin Steele, Keegan Thompson, Hayden Wisniewski, guys who have taken steps forward. But they're also saying that, okay, we like that, but we need this too. And in going out and getting a professional 31-year-old veteran pitcher who has already had his Tommy John surgery, already overcome his, his his injury situation, you hope, you hope, he's also overcome, he's a cancer survivor. Right. This is a tough-minded guy. He comes to the Cubs, and they, they're saying basically – Help us supplement our young pitchers. Let's get a good mix of veterans with young guys, and I like the mix. Uh, it is good, though, to hear that uh, that the funds have been released and uh, whatever you want to do, you go ahead and do you, it. So You spend and good. invest $85.5 million on these two players who are yeah. not centerpieces, but they're complementary pieces, and it mirrors what they did last offseason in terms of the investment in Seiya Suzuki and Marcus Stroman. Again, this is the beginning of this is the beginning of something. Whereas last offseason, that was the the entire picture. That was the carrot, right? Yeah, that, that's yeah. pretty much all it was. And this is this is a potentially an actual meal if you can get <laughs> more yourself than a snack. The shortstop. It's more than a cookie. And they're going for the shortstop. They're not just going for any shortstop. They're going for the shortstop. Carlos Correa still in play. That's that's a good idea. Dansby Swanson still in play. Yeah. Bogart's also getting a lot of attention from Arizona. Um, we have heard that the link to Swanson was a little bit stronger from different reporters than maybe we anticipated. He has the connection. We know his fiance is a Red Stars player. We know his connection yep. with Carter Hawkins and Vanderbilt. But I also think that you look at Correa still being in play. John Morosi, a guy from MLB Network, he spent a lot of time on Marquee Sports Network working the Cubs story yesterday. This is what he had to say at the end of a very busy day last night about the Cubs' next move. Cubs with the rotation. Jameson Tyon could be, I think, as good of a, as a two-starter for the Chicago Cubs. He's someone that had a very reliable spot in the Yankees rotation during the course of the year. I've always loved his repertoire. He can get different hitters out mm -hmm. at different points in the game with different pitches. He's that versatile. I think he really learned a lot there in the American League East. And certainly, Cole, a yep. huge day overall for the Cubs. You add Tyon and Bellinger in the same day. And I don't think the Cubs are done yet. Certainly one big hole filled in the rotation. The center fielder now, more to come from the Cubs. There you go. That's it. That's I, all we're waiting on. I love the word repertoire. Yes, it's a great word. <laughs> I love the word repertoire. Yeah. yeah. And Jam Jamison Tyone has quite a repertoire of pitches. Mm -hmm. Fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, the typical ones. This is a guy that back in 2010, I think it was, 2010, he was the number two overall draft pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You know who went first that year? And who went third that year? Bryce Harper, 
Jamison Tyone. Yeah. Manny Machado. Yeah. I'd rather have the other two. <laughs> no offense to him. <laughs> Me too. Not picking on him in any now, way. Now that's a signing. There you go. <laughs> Bring them all in. That would be awesome. <laughs>